And we have a, a picture here, there's an electron micrograph of chalk. And you can see that it's a very open structure. And here are all the little skeletons of the beasts that lived in that. Um, and it's a very interesting material because it's got quite an open structure. You can see a lot of space in there. We call them voids. But the skeletons are cemented together. So it's quite strong. Um, and uh, so that's good. It's not very compressible. So it's uh, in its undisturbed state. It's quite strong. It's not compressible. And you can dig it very easily. But the treacherous part is, if you disturb that structure, um, it can turn into a paste very quickly, which is very treacherous because it reduces in volume, releases water, and it turns into sort of toothpaste material. Right. Uh, and that can be very treacherous. And that's done through what vibration and it's the It's done through of water. mechanical disturbance. Right. The other thing about chalk is that if you uh, have it exposed to the atmosphere, because of its structure, uh, when water gets drawn into it, the freezing point depresses, it can draw water in, but once it freezes, it destroys the stru this structure, this delicate structure of the chalk. So chalk can be destroyed by frost action, uh, and it heaves and causes all sorts of problems. You don't want chalk immediately beneath a road surface, because the frost can get at it and cause a huge amount of damage. Because in terms of heave, we, we automatically assume we're talking about clay as being the biggest problem, but... but Chalk well, with equally. chalk, if you, get, if you get water into it and it freezes, it actually breaks apart. You get some increase in volume due to freezing, and it destroys the chalk structure, and it becomes this soft, horrible, pasty material when it thaws. Right. Well, talk, speaking of chalk, then, uh, the, the deeper geology of, of the London Basin, we've got a diagram here, yes. which is... Uh, taking a look of the yes. London Basin area. Well, I think when you're looking at a soil map, it's very important to try and understand not just the surface, but what is beneath it. And as I mentioned just now, you have the London Clay Basin. Uh, and at the bottom of the basin, you have the chalk. So if we look here, we have the chalk. And that emerges to the north at the Chilterns. And it emerges to the south at what's called the North Downs. Uh, and that's a basin. So the chalk underlies the whole thing. And then overlying the chalk, we have the Thanet sands. And you'll find uh, the, th the, the, the sands shown here. And then over them, we have this Lambeth group, which we were talking about, which is very difficult to tunnel. Uh, and they emerge here. And then above them, we have the London clay, which is over most of North London. That's uh, near the surface, overlying the London clay. You often get gravel, which has been deposited by the River Thames at various stages. And you also get alluvium, which is a, a mixture of usually of silts and often quite soft clays, recently deposited.